copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Contra Costa Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 258 regarding a missing person. Be on the lookout for Manuel Santos, missing from his home since September 1st. That's all. Roll Super. <laughs> Wintry weather sneaking up on us, your car needs more than ever the teamwork of smooth flowing, wear resisting Rio Lube motor oil and fast charging Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Rio Lube, the 100% paraffin base oil, is sold in cans, not only to prevent dilution or substitution, but to keep it clean so that it may fulfill our promise that motor heat, speed, or winter cold cannot break it down. Rio Lube will protect every moving part of your motor, and it costs but a quarter a quart. Better put some Rio Grande cracked in the tank, Dr. Lensley. Oh, yes. But I think I need only remind you, friends, that if you want the best your car can give, you cannot afford to power it with anything less than the gasoline which is found in the tanks of more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other public serving equipment wherever it is sold than any other brand. Get Rio Grande cracked. The gasoline that is first with those who know gasoline best. The story we are to hear tonight has been taken from the confidential files of the Sheriff of Contra Costa County. We have therefore asked Sheriff John A. Miller to prepare a foreword for our program from San Francisco. Recently, I heard a celebrated psychologist say that crime is essential to civilization. In all my career as a peace officer, I have not found that to be a true statement. I have found that crime is an ever-present problem, but I cannot agree that it is an essential one. The psychologist is treading on dangerous ground, in my opinion, when he recommends the breaking of bad laws as a means of eliminating them. There are many unjust laws on the statute books, but they should be eliminated through the channels of the law itself and not through the actions of lawless savages. That is exactly what a criminal is, a lawless savage. And sooner or later, regardless of how cunning he may be, he'll discover that crime does not hurt. In an Oakland radio station, a program is just being concluded. And as the concluding number on the Portuguese hour tonight, Manuel Santos will sing three and... Que tiene una boca cual miel de flor Que apasionado por sus encantos En un dulce beso Le di mi amor a tu ligañita Tus lindos ojitos negros Tu boquita tan divina Tu cuerpecito sin paz Tal parece una diosa la bastrina y ojitos cual la serina, de hermosura sin igual, trigañita. Yo me siento enamorado desde aquel día sagrado que nos curamos a más. Trigañita, eres tú la mujercita de más sabrosa boquita. Que la Dios puede un beso. Sigue, 
en mi vida, mi bellita, ven mi amor, ven cuchunga, ven mamita que me muero de dolor. de mi vida, de mi bellita, de mi amor, ven, chunga, ven, mamita, que me muero de dolor. Our scene shifts now to the town of Redeo. Two days later, Manuel Pino talks to his friend, Mario. Mario, you have seen Santos? Not today. I don't see him since Tuesday. Tuesday? That's just one day ago. Uh, no, but he told me Tuesday morning he was going to Oakland to buy a new radio. And I don't see him since. I was on, he was on the radio program Sunday night, no? Sure, he sang a couple of songs, one in Portuguese and one in Spanish. I know, I heard him. Well, anyway, he was at home when I leave for work Tuesday morning. That's when he told me he was going to Oakland to buy the radio. But when I get home, he's not there, and he's not been back since. Oh, well, maybe he decided to have a good time in Oakland. Oh, no, no, I don't think he would do that. He, he do not want to lose his job at the smelter. And he would stay away from work unless something had happened to him. But what could happen to him? I don't know. There, there were some guys around here who, who don't like him. They're jealous because he sings on the radio and all the girls, they rave about ah, him. Ah, nobody's doing nothing to Santos. He's too popular. Well, just the same. I, I go to Oakland and look for him. I go with you. I got to pay speeding fine in Berkeley. How about we take your car? Mine, she's not running so good. All right. But I got to come back by 4 o'clock. We better start about noon. Okay. Pick me up at my house at noon. <laughs> Three days later, as an excited town discussed the disappearance of Manuel Santos, the foreman of the smelting company made inquiries. Hey, Mario, come here a minute. Yes? Where's Santos and Pino? Have you seen either of them? No, not since Wednesday. I see Pino Wednesday. Well, how about Santos? Has anybody seen him this week? I don't think so. We went to Oakland to look for him, Pino and me. We couldn't find him. Well, Pino hasn't been to work this week either. That is, since Wednesday. I'll fire that guy when he does show up. Maybe something happened to Pino, too. Uh, they'll probably both show up with a terrific hangover. Pino, maybe, but not Santos. He would not stay away from work if there was not something wrong. Now, what makes you so sure of that? He worked hard and saved his money. He got lots of money in the bank. Besides, he would not miss the radio program tomorrow. He must have practiced this afternoon. Well, maybe you're right. But if them two birds show up drunk, I'll can them both. Ten minutes past nine o'clock next morning, the telephone rang in the home of Deputy Sheriff Beck. Hello? Ralph? Yeah. What's up, Edna? A couple of boys found a body in the creek at Rodale and the... That's Chris's district. I know it, but I can't locate him. And Sheriff Miller says you better go down and find out what it's all about. Okay. Call the coroner and the DA's office for me, will you? And I'll go down and look the situation over. All right. Find the constable, Gene Shea, down there already. I'll be seeing you. Hello, Gene. What's coming off around here? Lots of excitement in the Portuguese colony. How come? Yeah, word got around pretty fast, and we found the body in the creek a while ago. It's a lot of speculations as to who it might be. That's so? Who's missing? A couple of fellas. Manuel Santos hasn't been seen or heard from since last Tuesday. Fender has disappeared Wednesday. What's his name? Manuel Pino. Getting a lot of Manuels in this case already. Well, that's a common name around here. Who do you think the fellow down there on the creek bed is? I don't know. I'm waiting for the coroner's men to get here. Brooks came out just before you did, and he decided to send for Coroner Abbott before he did anything. Mm-hmm. Might be a good idea at that. Where'd this fellow Santos live, the one who's missing? In that house on the creek right down there. Let's take a look at it. You say this fellow's been gone since Tuesday? Oh, Monday. Nobody but Pino saw him Tuesday. And nobody's seen Pino since Wednesday. Yeah, that's about the size of it. The place looks deserted, all right. The door's locked, too. I was up there a few minutes before you came. Try the door. I have to try a window, then. He's on the inside. These places never are locked up very tight. Hmm. Seems to have been a fight of some kind going on in here lately. I'll see. Blood all over the place. Let's take a look at the back part of the joint. Hmm. Looks like somebody's really looking for something, judging from the way things are torn up. Mm-hmm. 
wonder why they'd stop to tear pictures out of an album, though. No telling. Uh-oh. There is something. Where? Take a look at that washed up there. Bloody blanket. Well, looks like we got a first-class murder on our hands. Yeah, but who's murdered? Santos or Pino? Maybe neither one, maybe both. Who knows? <laughs> The body was taken from the creek, and an examination begun to find the cause of death. Meanwhile, Beck and Shea continued their investigation at the local bank. Good afternoon. I'm Ralph Beck from the sheriff's office. I'd like to see Mr. Dern, the bank manager. Hi, Mr. Dern. What can I do oh. for you? Constable Shea here and I are working on a case we got this morning, that body out there in the creek. Oh, yes, I heard about that. Who was it? Well, they haven't made a complete identification yet, but there are a couple of men missing, and we thought maybe they might possibly have an account here. Possibly. Who are they? Manuel Santos was one of them. Oh, surely. Santos has an account here. Manuel Pino is the other one. Pino has an account here, too. Much money in either account? Well, I'll take a look. Just a minute, I'll take a look at the ledger, please. Think the boys might have been bumped off with their money? Never can tell. Been done, you know. <laughs> You're telling me. Did you notice anything peculiar in that Santos house? Oh, what do you mean? Notice what a good radio that fella had compared to the rest of the furniture? Oh, sure. Santos was a little cracked on that point. Yeah? He always bought the best radio money could get. Listened to all the musical programs. He was always singing them at parties, things like that. It was always a life of the party. How old would you say that radio is? Well, if he ran true to form, it was less than a year old. He bought the very best every time a new model came out. Well, mm. gentlemen, there's something very peculiar about those two accounts. Both of them have been closed out this week. This week? Yes, here's the ledger sheet on both of them. Now, Pino drew out $450 on the 1st. That's last Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. And Santos' account was closed on August 21st with a withdrawal for $400. What was the last check before that? Ah, oh, let's see. August 16th for $500. Here are the checks, both made out to cash. What was the last big check on Santos' account before that? Ah, oh, let me see. Now, here's one drawn on September 5th, 1936, for $100. Made out to a furniture store in Oakland for a radio. Yeah, I'd have bet on that one. Let me get the name of the store, will you? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Thanks. Who cashed that $500 check? Well, it's endorsed by Mrs. Harris. She was teaching the boys to write English. I remember when she came in with the check. How about the one on August 21st? Uh, uh, well, it looks like that one was cashed by Pino. Well, didn't that seem strange to you here at the bank? Oh, no, that often happened. Santos often made our checks to Pino. They're the best of friends. Lived in the same house together. Came over to this country together from Portugal. Oh, is that so? Yes, they're very close friends. As a matter of fact, when Pino found out Santos hadn't been back last Tuesday, he came to my house with a fellow named Mario told me to be sure not to cash any more checks on Santos' account. Mm, and you haven't seen him since? That's right. As far as I know, nobody else has seen him. Except this fellow Mario. Except Mario. Maybe we better speak with this Mario. Mario, I understand you went to Mr. Dern's house with Manuel Pino Tuesday night. That is right. Why? Pino wants to be sure nobody takes Santos' money out of the bank. In the bank, he's already closed that day. Uh, well, what did you do then? Well, I agreed to meet Pino the next morning as soon as the bank was open up. I had to pay speeding fine in Berkeley. He wanted to go to a furniture store in Oakland and look for Santos. Did you meet him? Yes, I picked him up on the corner by his place, and we go by the bank to get some money. Then we go to Oakland. Well, where did you go first? Well, we were to go to a place on 32nd Street, but the landlady, she knows seen Santos. Then we go downtown and look for him, but we did not see him. Then we talk about going to the jail, but Pino say that do no good because if Santo is in jail, he telephone us. Is that all you did? No, we keep looking for Santo till about four o'clock. Then I got to come back because I work at night. What about Pino? What became of him? I don't know. He say he stay in Oakland and keep looking for Santos. He say he go to his father-in-law's house in Sacramento and see if Santos is there. Well, why should he go there? Santos and Pino come from the same place in Puerto Gallo. Their wives are there now. Oh. They know Pino's father-in-law. Uh, Sometimes Santos go to see them. I see. Where did you leave Pino in Oakland? Down by the bus station. He was going to catch a bus. You know anybody who might have it in for these two fellows? No, nobody. Everybody liked Santos. But lots of fellows didn't like Pino. But nobody had it in for them. Well, how did Santos and Pino get along? Like brothers. They lived together four years almost in that house. Uh-huh. Well, thanks, Mario. I may call you later for some more information.
The autopsy completed. Deputy Beck conferred with Sheriff Miller. Well, Sheriff, I just got the report on that body we found out at Rodeo. Yeah? Identified him yet? Yeah. He was Manuel Santos, native of Portugal. Never took out any citizenship papers. Oh? Any idea who killed him? Not yet. We're looking for another man, a friend of Santos. He disappeared about the same time. Went to look for Santos and never came back. Oh, do you suspect him? Well, from what I can learn from the friends of the two men, this Pino would be the last person in the world to want to harm Santos. Any idea where he might be? No, I haven't, unless he's been killed, too. Both men drew quite a lot of money out of the bank about the same time, and both of them may have been murdered. Well, don't pass up any bets, Ralph. What do you mean? Don't leave any points uncovered. Be sure you haven't overlooked anything. Oh, I will, Chief. And what's your next move? I'm going to Sacramento and talk to Pino's in-laws. Maybe they know if he had any enemies. Okay. Let me know what you find out. Now, Mrs. Silver, just when did you see your son-in-law last? I uh, have not seen Manuel and Pino for two, maybe three months. Was he in the habit of coming down here frequently? He used to come more often, but lately he has not been around. So your daughter, Pino's wife, where is she? She is in Portugal. Oh, you left her there with Manuel when you came here? Yes. Do you happen to know if Santos and your son-in-law ever had any trouble with each other? No, they were like brothers, those two. Uh Uh-huh. You're sure Pino didn't come here last Wednesday? He has not been here. You don't happen to know why he hasn't been around lately, do you? Well, we lend Manuel uh, $500 when he comes to this country. He never paid it back. We told him not to come here again until he was ready to pay it. 500 huh? He owed my brother in Portugal $400. He never paid that back. I see. Where, where did Pino come into this country? I mean, where did he land? He came to um, uh, Newark in uh, uh, New Jersey, I think it is. Uh, it was the same place where we landed. He worked for a man there when he first came to this country. Uh, his name was um, Tavares. Uh, he owned a store on Market Street. I see. Well, if you see Pino, tell him to get in touch with us, will you? Yes. Portuguese consul for this district. Vice consul, if that will help you any. Mm, it might. I'm trying to get some information on two men who came from your country. What are their names? Santos and Pino. They both have the same first names, Manuel. Oh, yes. I have heard about Manuel Santos. He was uh, murdered, no? That's what we think. But right now, I'm more interested in Manuel Pino. We don't know what's become of him. You think he has been killed, too? He may have been. Just what did you want to know about him? Well, I'd like to know if he ever took out any citizenship papers. Only his first papers, according to other records. Oh, you've already looked him up? Yes. As soon as we heard he was reported missing, we checked our records. Uh Uh-huh. He came into this country at Newark, New Jersey. Yeah. He worked for one month for Tavares and Madeira at 501 Market Street in that city. Then he came to California. His father-in-law lives in Sacramento. Mm, I know that. I've talked to the family. Pino has worked for two years for the American Smelting Company. Oh, what I'm more interested in is how he can get out of this country legally. There are only three places where a Portuguese citizen can secure passports. One is San Francisco, one is Boston, and the other is New York. New Jersey again, huh? But in the case of Pino, he couldn't secure his passport except in San Francisco. He would have to show tax receipts showing his income tax had been paid. And those receipts would have to be checked in California. But he might stow away on a ship. He might. But if you know the Portuguese people, you know that is not likely. Yes, I've noticed they usually leave the same way they came in. But, George, that's an idea. Chief of Police, Newark, New Jersey. Be on the lookout for one Manuel Pino, age 27, height 5 feet 8 inches, 
Weight 175 pounds. Brown eyes, dark complexion. Hold and notify Sheriff Contra Costa County, California. State Department, Washington, D.C. Request notification any passport application by Manuel Pino, Portuguese. Wanted for murder. So, you've made up your mind that Pino killed Santos, have you, Beck? Yes, sir, I have. Uh, I want to get you to do something for me, Sheriff. All right, what is it? I want to send out bulletins to all police departments. And I want Norm Wilson to fly back to Newark and be ready for Mr. Pino when he shows up. You're pretty sure he'll head back there, aren't you? Positive. You'll let me in for a lot of criticism if this hunch doesn't work out. I know that, but it'll work out. Okay. Wilson will hop off in the morning. Your bulletins can go out tonight. Then what? I'm going to make a list of all the letters we found in Santos' house, all of them that are addressed to Pino, and check all the addresses that are in this country, see if he's communicated with any of them. You can really think of things to keep busy with. All those things you brought in are in my office, if you want to start in on them now. I sure do. Yeah. Notified the post office to hold any mail addressed to Santo Sapino? Sure. And I've asked him to watch for anything coming from New Jersey. Well, there's the stuff. Pitch right in. But makes you so sure Pino's alive. Too many angles that don't check. I don't like that coincidence of those bank accounts being closed out so close together. Oh. I don't like the idea of Pino looking all over Northern California for Santos when his body was lying in a creek not a hundred feet from his own house. Hey, you've got a point there. And I don't like the absence of pictures of Pino and all this junk we picked up at his house. No, oh, what's wrong with that? Take a look at this album. Full of pictures of Santos and a lot of other guys, but not a picture in there that looks like Pino's friends say he looks. Hey, that does seem funny. Yeah, when we went into that house, it was turned upside down, like somebody had been looking for something. But all that's missing is Santos' money and pictures. Now, that doesn't make sense. And you told me a porter at the bus station thought he remembered a man like Pino leaving Oakland on Wednesday. That's right. And another thing. Pino told this fellow Mario that Santos was going to a certain furniture store to buy a radio. I checked with the store. It was the same one where he bought the other radio. And neither Santos or Pino had been in there since a year ago. So what? Pino said definitely that he was going there to, to, to find out if Santos had been there. And another thing, he's supposed to have gone to a rooming house on 32nd Street in Oakland. And the landlady says he never showed up there. From which you conclude... That he wasn't looking for Santos. And that because he knew darn well where Santos was. He knew Santos was lying in that creek. Yeah? Sheriff Miller? This is the post office in Rodale. Just got an airmail letter from Newark, New Jersey, addressed to a fellow named Mario here in Rodell. Okay. Hold it till one of my men gets there. We want to compare the handwriting with some specimens we have here. All right. We'll hold it. Well, Ralph, we may have something to go on. Yeah? Mario's letter at the Rodale Post Office, and it's from Newark, New Jersey. <laughs> Expecting a letter? Maybe. Get much mail in that box of yours? No, not much. Bills once in a while, that's all. Yeah, looks like you got more than bills this time. A letter? By airmail? Yeah. Not from Newark, by any chance? Yes, it is. How do you know? Just guessed it. I wonder who it's from. I, I don't know about it in New Jersey. Why don't you read it? Look. He's from Pino. Manuel Pino. He's in Newark, New Jersey. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> But Pino was too wily to give his own address. He gave the address of a friend, but by arrangement with Mario, a decoiler was dispatched to the suspected man. Then on the 14th of September, two weeks after the death of Manuel Santos, a man walked into a store in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, do that letter come for me yet? Uh, the registered letter the postman say out for me. Is your name Pino? Manuel Pino? Uh, what if she is? Who are you? I'm Norman Wilson, Sheriff's Office of Contra Costa County out in California. Did you ever hear of the place? No. Well, you will, because that's where you're going, right now. Vehemently denying his guilt, Pino was brought back to California to the office of Sheriff Miller. Sit down, Pino. We want to ask you a few questions. I got nothing to say. We'll find out about that. Why did you kill Manuel Santos? I did not kill him. You're the last person to see Manuel Santos alive. I did not kill him. Who did? I don't know. Did you see all those people across the street when we brought you in here? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I saw them. You know who those people are? Sure. Yeah. They're your friends, aren't they? I suppose so. And they're Manuel Santos' friends, too, aren't they? 
I guess so. Come over here to the window, Pino. Listen to the welcome your friends have for you. No, 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 let him take me. No. You want to go out there and argue with them about whether you killed Santos? No, no. No, do not let him get me. No. No, do not let him get me. Lock me up. Lock me up. What for? Do you not let him get me. Lock me up. Lock me up. What for? So you didn't do anything. Why should we lock you up? Yeah, Archie. You think? Why should we lock you up? Yeah, Archie. Yes, I do it. I, I kill my man. I kill him. All right, start talking. Why did you kill him? It was his voice. I no could stand that voice. All the time he was singing. Singing, singing. Night and day, in the house, at work, in the car, always he was singing. One night, for Sunday night, he'd come home from his radio program. Stop it, stop it! Oh, Manuel, what's wrong? Do you not like my singing? I know, can't stand it. You never get tired of your own voice. <laughs> of course not. I love to sing. That's why I buy the good radio, so I could learn a new song. <laughs> so I can sing it to my friends. All the time you sing to your friends. All the time you are the life of the party. Sure. All the time you make the hits with the girls. While I, I, Manuel Pino, must sit back and listen to that jackass bray you call your voice. You do not like my voice? I hate your voice. It is not a voice. It is a frog crook. You do not think I can sing? You can sing better, perhaps? If I could not, I would cut my throat. You would like to cut my throat, perhaps? Huh? Then you could have all. Hear it to yourself. You do not think I know what you have done to me, do you? You do not know that I have found out that you have forced my neck to the check that I banged to you. <laughs> you do not know that I found out that all this time you have been stealing from me. <laughs> stealing from me. You cut your throat. If you cannot sing better than I, sing better than I. Very well. Very well. There is my raisin. Cut it. I can cut it for you. Or shall I cut it for you? You keep away from me, Manuel. You keep away. Keep away. And that be the way it happened. He attacked me, so I killed him. I have to do it. I get it. The old self-defense racket, eh? Manslaughter instead of murder. Is that it? Uh, yes. Yes, that is it. That is the truth. I, I have told you how it happened. Oh, you got it all figured out, haven't you, Pino? You think you'll get off with manslaughter and be out roaming around again in five or six years. Is that it? Uh, maybe. Who knows? I do. Well, you may get away with this. I don't know. But I do know one thing. If you ever do get out, it's back to Portugal for you. Portugal? Certainly. You're an undesirable alien. Very undesirable. They'll deport you. But I cannot go back to Portugal. Oh, why not? Santos people, they will kill me. That's too bad. No, no. No, no, you cannot do this to me. In Portugal, it is an eye for an eye. A tooth for a tooth. A tooth for a tooth, huh? Yes, they will kill me. Well, Pino, you don't have to worry about that tooth for a tooth stuff. Oh, no? No. It's a throat for a throat that's going to ruin you. In just a moment, we shall hear the concluding facts regarding our program. Meanwhile, if you have motoring problems, I suggest you solve them with pure 100% paraffin base real lube. The motor oil that defies the weatherman and your greatest speed. Solve them with real gun to crack the motor fuel of real police car performance, the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. Pino was found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to San Quentin for a period of one to 15 years. Upon the completion of his sentence, he will be deported to his native land where the relatives of the murdered Santos wait to impress upon him that crime does not pay. Sheriff's Office called a roll car and sent an old car to cancellation of broadcast 258 regarding a missing person. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Over you,
narrator Frederick Lindsley bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this time, Rio Grande will present The Case of the Glass Gun. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Calling all cars, attention all cars to broadcast 259 regarding a train robbery. Be on the lookout for the following described suspects. 